Ooh, what's up guys? Of course, welcome to another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with your Strule, of course, the Scarander. And today we're going up against Titan Atlas, I don't know if it's Richard, and yeah, we've battled a few times before. We are quite even, to be honest, I think we're equals in wins or loss, so he's definitely like one of those people that you know, I know gives me a quite even match, to be honest. And if you wanted to do the game, this was the last battle I had on my stream, so I want to thank, of course, the people who joined the stream, you know, thank you for joining me and watching for my shenanigans and whatnot, then, you know, watching me drinking sparkling wine, that was obviously quite fun. <laughs> so, anyway guys, uh, look at this team here, we actually both have teams that are not fully UU. You know, I kind of like that idea that, even though it's a UU match, it's only like for team structure, it's not as much the game idea. Uh, which means that it becomes quite inventive. And look at my opponent here, we got Moltres, Tentacruel, Zeptile, Cobalion, Tarantrum, and then Nidoking. And um, yeah, biggest threat, definitely Zeptile for my team at least. Um, I have myself, Octillery, Meowstic, Trevenant, Tipaudon, Fulf, or Stoutland, and um, Neuven. So we both get free UU, I guess, and then it is. I think one are you for both sides, and or I have three in you. But yeah, other than that, it's definitely like like I said, an, an even match when it comes to the raw strength of, of uh, the team. My opponent is very weak to ground. He only got one immunity and one resistance, and uh, <clears throat> I actually need to exploit that if I'm going to have an honest chance against my opponent to get some kind of momentum. I know my Hippowdon can fret him out quite well here. And uh, yeah, we have the Hippowdon Stoutling combination because I really, really wanted to win. And um, that means nothing in the higher tiers. And I'm actually, <laughs> you know, I'm definitely feeling that it's not as powerful anymore. But anyway, guys, you know, let's actually do this. So at the get-go, I really was set my opponent to actually lead off with either Nido King or he's a Tyrantrum. So I just went for my um, Octillery because of the utilities. This is Assault Vested Octillery and it has been working wonders. And look at this, it's going for Life or Boosted Thunderbolt and I don't take that well, but I am able to retaliate and take him out actually with my Scald. Yeah, that just happened. Octillery coming through and that was really awesome. So anyway, he's gonna go into his Tyrant Room and as of now, I don't know this thing is Scarfed. But he's going to go for that Rockhead Head Smash, and of course, being 80% accurate, accurate, it's going to hit. So my Voltas, my Artillery is going down, while well, I was thinking, you know, this is okay, I can set up with Minerva from this range, so I'm just gonna go for Barrier. This is where I find out that this son of a dinosaur is Scarfed, and this Barrier obviously won't help me for the next incoming hit. And uh, Minerva, no. It's like a curse for my music, you know. Not able to sweep even once. It hasn't been able to do so for so long. So, anyway, I'm gonna go into my Bugra. And um, this is definitely like fretting him out. There is no way he can do damage to me. And I definitely can do damage to him. So, I decided to just go for Stealth Rocks because I at least need to shut down the Moltres in a way or a fashion that I can. Um, so definitely judgment call to be honest, and the self rocks are up. So he's going to go right ahead here and mega evolve. You know he actually hit me now with three head smashes. So he the hex is definitely his favor. He's not yet to miss a move, and what do you know, he's gonna miss the leaf storm, and I am going to retaliate with an ice fang, which is a one hit KO because of dragon's hyping of septile. Ooh, it's so bad. Ah, it stings so bad. I really felt like, you know, that that is very decisive because that was actually his honest chance of taking me out. I definitely did a risky play there and it paid off, yes, but very high cost, very high cost. So anyway, the Moltres is here and um, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna gamble it. I don't have Rock Slide or anything like that. I'm just gonna go into Westney, my Neuven, and... Uh, what I can do from this range, my not even actually specs, and since it doesn't have any fair typing, I am free to go with my dra uh, Dragon Pulse. I decided to not have Draco Meteor because I do realize that Dragon Pulse might be more viable in the long run, and it does just a bit over half here, and my opponent will go for Agility, which is really nice, and Moltres is actually very good with Agility, you know, it can really outspeed things now with Agility up, and um, yeah, just overall, this thing got way more threatening than it needs to be. He's gonna go for Roost, 
I think he actually thought he could manage to stall me out or in some fashion or see if I switch out move or switching out but no I'm not going anywhere you're going down you are going down and he actually only have flamethrower and uh, hurricane so he's actually going to go for that hurricane and due to sandstorm it only has a 50% chance of hitting so it's a 50-50 chance to be honest and he, do he's do he does miss yes but that is the edge or you know the main perk of sandstorm to actually be able to not take those sand or take those flying hits anyway it's gonna go to Tentacruel and at this point I was so sure it was gonna go for an ice beam so I felt really threatened here and I was gonna switch out so I went to my Godric my Trevenant Assault Vested and he just went for knockoff and that really sucks because it does so much damage I have no investment in defense whatsoever so it did way more than it should have because Tentacruel doesn't have that much power in the physical side but anyway, I just decided to go for Horn Leech here because I do feel that I can recover in some fashion. But uh, he actually shows me the Acid Spray and you know, while the move itself is not that powerful, uh, in conjunction with the stab moves of a Tentacruel, it can actually rack up some damage and it can be quite impossible to stall out a Tentacruel because now he controls the stalling. So with that in mind, I decided to actually set up the sand again and, you know, getting so much ship damage as possible. I know it was a possibility that um, he would stay in and not feel threatened for uh, my Earthquake because he does have a lot of weaknesses to Earthquake left. So I was thinking I can at least take a Scald. I, I know my Powdown has done this before, but with the Acid Spray, my Powdown is not going, you know, not only get annihilated, it's gonna falter. It's sand that comes out of its sockets on its back. It's gonna turn water and he will melt by cooking water. That makes no sense, but that was that is just what happened. He's gonna get annihilated. And uh, at this point I was thinking, all right, I have eight turns of sand. Fulf, you're up. And um, at this point, I knew he's won he just is gonna stay. I knew he's gonna switch to something that is weak to fight in. So I just went for super power, and Kubalion is gonna show his face here. And um, you know, I wanna thank Kubalion, you know, showing his beauty and his shiny form. But I don't like it, and my power is way, way more powerful. And I'm gonna take this thing out. That was actually quite a risky play. Had he stayed in there with the Tentacruel, we might have had a different story here, people. But yeah, I get the momentum here, and obviously Tentacruel is coming back, and I can't do anything. I need the Sandstorm, and then also I need to actually be able to take on the Tyrandrum, but I need to outspeed it, which is something that only Fulf can do, and he's the only one left that can do so. So with all that in mind, I knew I had to, um, I had to think of something, like something fast. And I need to take, take out this Tentacruel as fast as I can. So at this time, you know, we've gone for two turns, and this is going to be turn three, and it's going to go for the Acid Spray, which actually is not enough to take me out. I was, um, I was thinking that, you know, that is a very possibility that it could happen. So just going to go for the Horn Leech, and it's of course not enough, but I do recover some HP, so I'm actually able to take on another Acid Spray, and that is going to work wonderful for me, of course, and, um... <laughs> Uh, the stalling, the stalling, but you no, know, the recovery is just, it's just taking on it. <laughs> it's share time. But anyway, Guard is going to take barely the second acid spray, but it does take it. And now we are for turn 5, or turn 4, no, 5, for a sandstorm. So I still have 3 turns of sand, which means that he, <laughs> he must wait for 2 turns to wait for the sand to turn off when he's switching to Star Entry, which is going to be his last poke. But um, yeah, you guys will just see. That this Tarantrum will show his face, its supremacy, its power, and annihilate my Trevenant with the Dragon Claw. So I think my opponent at this point thinks that he can actually outspeed my uh, Fulf in the sand. And for our second air, I thought so too. So Fulf is gonna come in and, you know, fearing the dinosaur in front of him. But the speed is actually not to worry in the sand and my Southland will come through, go for superpower, which actually is enough to take out this Tarantrum and that is going to be game people. So wow, that was actually, you know, it's a very fast paced game but we both had very few Pokemon left, we really overpowered each other in this battle. So yeah, um, I don't know what to say, my opponent 
played a very good game here and uh, he usually do, no doubt about that. And let's say here for a situation that my actually my Stoutland wasn't in the sandstorm, it would be very, very likely that he would have won because think about it, it's very likely that Dragon Claw would have taken out the Stoutland and the only Pokemon got left was the Neuven. And since this Tyrantra was scarfed, it is very able to uh, even outspeed my uh, my Neuven. So yeah, it was more close than it looked. And, uh, I really couldn't break through. I got a lot of luck there, of course, with the Sceptile and Leaf Storm and whatnot. And uh, yeah, just basically, I I got all my momentum from the last part of the match until the very point where I took out the Cabalion. It was not very apparent that I could have, you know, win this battle, to be honest. So, Titan Atlas, Richard, you know, GG man. Um, like I said, good game. And uh, yeah, if I had a loss, I wouldn't have cared because it was a very good battle. I think we both got a lot of good showcase here. and. Uh, Overall, it's a good combination of entertainment battle because of that. And if you guys thought that was entertaining, make sure to leave a like, of course. And if you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe. And remember, this guy's limit, guys. Have a good day and take care. Alright? Bye.